You know, Washington is a swamp in more ways than one. The predators aren't just political. They're sleazy, sexual perverts who claim the moral high ground based not on truth and justice, but on rank politics. And the craziest part is whenever there is a finding against one of these perverts, you pay the damages. And this must end. I have a few solutions. Number one. If an employee, if a congressman or senator makes a sexual claim and wins, which requires you, the taxpayers, pay the settlement, we must get the money back. Since when have taxpayers been responsible for the sexual perversions of people we send to Congress to represent us? So how do we get the money back? We take it out of their pay. We sue them or we take it out of their pension. No hard-working, tax-paying American should ever have to pay for the sexual immorality of these deviants. Number two, if an elected official seeks to hide a settlement for sexual harassment by putting it in his operating budget and thus secretly paying the victim, not only should reimbursement be made to us, but a criminal investigation should be opened. Covering up payment to a complainant by saying the woman is working when she is not is a no-show job, conspiracy, and a fraud for which state legislators have gone to jail. Number three, no more confidentiality. Complainants are forced to work in this same office where they allege the harassment or the hostile work environment occurred, and they're forced into counseling for 30 days and then mediation for another 30 days, as if they're at fault for being a victim. While the lawmakers, well, they're not required to go to anything. Every one of these cases needs to see the light of day. And if we as a society demand that complaints against priests be exposed and filed through our criminal justice system, these representatives should at the very least be held to the same standard. And number four, where there's been a finding of a hostile work environment or sexual harassment against an elected official, he or she must resign. Now, I've been telling you in the D.C. swamp, it doesn't matter to what party you belong. These establishment politicians have had dirt on each other for years, and so they are held hostage to each other. They cannot risk taking a stand for us. That's why they'll say one thing to us and in the quiet of the night pass a budget that is totally inconsistent with what they promised us. The old boy network at work. One hand washes the other. You don't tell on me, and I won't tell on you. Think of it. 264 payouts, $17.2 million. The fund is virtually unlimited. And that doesn't include no-show payments by congressmen who don't want any record, who cover up their wrongdoing in their own operating budget. It all started in 1995. The Congressional Accountability Act of the 104th Congress. What I want to know is who decided that sexual wrongdoing by these fools is not their responsibility, but instead the taxpayers? Who decided we would pay for their sexual perversions? Who decides or sits in judgment on these claims? Why is this stuff confidential? Why don't we know who these findings are against? And shame. Shame on the women in Congress who sat quietly for the last 20 years, knowing that there was a fund used to cover up sexual perversions, which makes the next federal female employee walking into that office vulnerable. And while these hypocrites trumpet the buckets of money that they put out to fight violence against women, they commit the very acts themselves, and they laugh at us at the same time. And as part of their charade, they voluntarily seek, as in the case of Senator Al Franken, an ethics or a House committee to review their actions. Well, that's a bunch of hogwash. The fix is in, folks. The last time a senator was kicked out of the Senate was during the Civil War. They think we're stupid. 
and maybe we are. And isn't it interesting that Al Franken demands that Roy Moore, accused of acts 40 years ago, and by the way, I've been real clear on how I feel about Moore. Franken says that Roy Moore has to go while Big Al Franklin has not even denied the sexual harassment allegations against him that occurred while he was a sitting United States senator. Where are our leaders? Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, for all your talk and moral piety. Each of you must immediately demand the release and unmasking of those against whom sexual harassment findings have been made. Otherwise, you get out too. Enough of this mess. And these guys have the gall to trash the president when they're the ones with actual findings against them, both Senator Franken and Congressman Conyers, and payouts to victims who've had to go through hell to even file a complaint? This isn't about politics anymore, and I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, a Conservative, or a Martian. If we don't follow a moral code in the halls of Congress, we are doomed as a nation. No one is above the law, and certainly not these bozos. It is time we, the people, demand the justice and the accountability that these fools have been preaching to us for years. And that's my open. Welcome back to Justice. You may remember last month the government issued a rule protecting religious nonprofits like the Little Sisters of the Poor from providing abortion services in their health care plans. It was a win for anyone who believes in religious freedom. But already states like California and Pennsylvania are suing to reverse that exemption. I'm joined now by Mark Rienzi, who is the lead attorney for Little Sisters of the Poor. All right, Mark, thanks for, for being with us tonight. But, you know, Mark, I have to tell you, I, I was kind of surprised when I saw this lawsuit in Cal by California and by Pennsylvania against the Little Sisters of the Poor. For some reason, I thought the Supreme Court of the United States in 2014 and 2016 made a decision in the Hobby Lobby case, thanks to Steve Green, that you can't force people people to violate their religious freedoms and to provide uh, uh, contraceptives uh, to employees. And, and, and the Supreme Court said you can't penalize little sisters of the poor. And now the Supreme Court, having spoken, these states come out and they're gunning for the little sisters of the poor. What's this about? Well, you're exactly right, Judge, and I tell you, the Little Sisters were surprised, too. Um, what, what, this, what this is about, really, is uh, Javier Becerra in California and mm. Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania trying to revive the last administration's unnecessary culture war. Um, everybody knows you don't need nuns to give out contraceptives. The federal government finally admitted that they couldn't and shouldn't do that, and they had lots of other ways. And these states are now just trying to pick up the old culture war. And I don't know who they think they're pleasing by attacking nuns, but it's not going to work. Well, and who's paying for all this? You know, the Little Sisters of the Poor, just remind my viewing audience, you know, who they are and what they do. Sure. Uh, the Little Sisters of the Poor are Catholic nuns who take care of the elderly poor and dying. Right. Um, and they take care of people who have no place else to go. And you asked who's paying for it. It's the taxpayers of Pennsylvania and California, unfortunately, who are paying for these lawsuits. I seriously doubt that they want their elected officials to go suing nuns who take care of the elderly, poor, and dying for free. Um, but that's who's paying for it. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's hard to believe that any of the voters actually want their governments to do this kind of thing. And then, but who represents the Little Sisters of the Poor? You do. I do. Um, I, I get to represent the Little Sisters of the Poor, which is a wonderful thing to do. Um, and what we're doing is we're going into court and we're telling those judges the Supreme Court has already decided this and you can't take away the Little Sisters of the Poor's rights. And, of course, there are just lots of ways for people to get contraceptives without nuns. And these states know that. This is just political grandstanding. Right. So that those individuals who may be working for religious institutions, they have other options, other ways to get contraception without forcing the Little Sisters of the Poor to expend their energy, their time on a case that's raised judicata. It's already been decided where there's already a precedent by the highest court in the land. Is this just mean-spirited states like California, a sanctuary state, Pennsylvania, not yet? 
yet a sanctuary state, but some of the biggest cities are resisting, you know, uh, uh, sanctuary cities, Philadelphia, et cetera. I mean, they just don't believe in accepting the law as it's written. I, I think that's right. They could have filed motions to intervene in the Supreme Court case, or they could oh, go back to the Supreme Court if they want. Uh, but they, they don't have the guts to do that. They filed their new suits, and they didn't complain about secular big corporations leaving out contraceptives. They were fine with that for years. They only seem to have a problem with it when the Little Sisters of the Poor want to do it, and that just makes no sense. You know, the sad part is, Mark, that, you know, you have groups of individuals who are selfless and taking care of those who are poor and dying and are forced to go through the stress of all this. These are mean-spirited uh, plaintiffs. And, uh, you know, in the end, I do believe there is a God. Anyway, Mark Rienzi, good luck. When do you think this will be over? Uh, well, the first hearings will be in December, and I actually think it might be over pretty quickly because these, are, these aren't good lawsuits. These are grandstanding lawsuits, and they're going to lose. All right, Mark Rienzi, thanks so much. Thanks.